Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, people, welcome to another edition of Iron Science Teacher 2018. Oh. I am your host, Jessica Sequins Parker, and I'm the director of teaching and learning here at the Exploratorium. And we are live at Pier 15 with an audience who I think is kind of excited. Are you? Yeah. Oh, amazing. And we're also broadcasting live. So hello to all of our amazing friends online. Love you out there. We're having a blast. Please feel free to like us and comment because we're having fun and we want to share that with you. So what in the world is Iron Science Teacher? What is it? It's based on a Japanese cooking show called Iron Chef back in the 90s. And that was an amazing cooking show because it had secret ingredients. And so the chefs had to come up and with these secret ingredients, make incredible meals. So we put an exploratorium spin on that and we are offering amazing middle school and high school science teachers the chance to cook up an incredible science classroom activity or demo with a secret ingredient. Why do we do this? Well, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that, Jessica. <laughs> um, because we love science of everyday things and we love to applaud great teaching and teachers. Am I right? Yeah. That's what I thought, that's what I thought. A lot of love in here, a lot of love in here because it's the summer, all right. But I should share that the ingredients are not so secret to our teachers. They might be secret to you. And today's secret ingredient is really based on and inspired by a summer exhibition that we have going called Inflatable. And Inflatable are gigantic, air-filled works of art appearing throughout the museum. So, with that said, audience, I need some serious help. I need you all to be the judges to help us crown the Iron Science Teacher Champion of 2018 with some of your hands, maybe your feet, maybe your vocal cords, anything that else that you could use to let me know that you love that teacher and that activity. Can you help me? Yeah. Awesome, well then let's get to it. Let's meet our contestants today. They are science teachers spending three weeks with us here in middle school, high school and leadership institute. First up is Sarah Berger. Sarah is representing the Leadership Institute. Sarah, tell us. Yes, I know, I know. One more round of applause for this, because this is amazing. <laughs> All right, where do you teach and what do you teach? I teach high school chemistry, and this upcoming year I'll be teaching in San Mateo, California. Give it up for San Mateo. <laughs> All right, representing Middle School Institute is Danny Tucci. <laughs> where do you teach and what do you teach? I teach sixth grade math, science, and social studies in East Palo Alto. Oh, give it up for East Palo Alto. All right, another middle school teacher coming up. Let's give a big round of applause for Lenar Modlon Sake. <laughs> Where do you teach and what do you teach? I teach in Los Angeles, seventh grade science. Give it up for LA. All right, and last, we have John Allen, who is representing the High School Institute. Here you go. Where do you teach and what do you teach, John? San Jose Physics. Do we need to say more, right? San Jose Physics, awesome. All right, contestants, are you ready to reveal the secret ingredients? Okay, awesome, well help me, let's do the big reveal behind here. The big reveal is they are gonna take these uh, surprise secret ingredients and try to whip up some amazing science activity. Are we ready, audience? Can you help us? Yes, three, two, one, what is it? It's bags. Oh, it's bags, can you believe it? Different kinds of bags. Okay, contestants, on your mark, get set, go! Make some science, give it up for our audience as they're prepping. Okay, so we have some plastic bags going on. We have some garbage bags. We have Ziploc bags. We have a lot of bags here. Why don't we check in on these amazing contestants? So, Sarah is giving out glass. Oh, oh, now we're in trouble. It's getting real up in here now, folks. Hang on, let me apply this. That looks classy, doesn't it? I look, 
but safety first. Safety first, kids. Here we go. Sarah, a high school chemistry teacher, appears to be adding isotone to a beaker. Um, she actually, her favorite thing to teach is thermodynamics, and I think she's a dynamic teacher because she told me that she loves to reignite the love of science in her students. Isn't that, that's pretty amazing. Yes, all right. Thank, oh, she's got other things going on. Wow, some socks here, some styrofoam cups. This is gonna be very dynamic. Thank you so much, Sarah. Let's move on down to Danny. Can I take off these glasses now? Because I can really not see a thing. Here we go. <laughs> Danny is doing something with a Ziploc bag and a straw and some duct tape. Oh, she's blowing some air in there. Great, she's trying to figure it out. Danny teaches sixth grade and she loves to teach chemical reactions. So fascinating, I found out that a common reaction in her life is that of happy taste buds because she eats peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on a daily basis. <laughs> I know, I know, amazing. Thank you, Danny. Let's go on down here to Lennar. What in the world is Lennar doing? He's got a paper bag. He's got some scissors. He's cutting. I don't think he likes the bag very much. <laughs> Something going on here. Um, he is a seventh grade middle school teacher, and he loves when the mind-blowing moments of science happen for his students. And I think we're gonna have some mind-blowing audience members here in a second as well. So thank you, and I'm so excited to have our minds blown. I don't, I don't know what's going on over here with John. Um, he, he does have pants, folks, he does have pants. So I'm not sure why the garbage bag is needed, but he seems to have two of them. Um, John teaches physics in high school, and he loves to actually teach about pressure. So I'm sure he's gonna be applying the pressure through some sort of garbage bag. Okay, audience, what do we think? How are they doing? <laughs> All right. So, contestants, you have another 30 seconds. We're gonna have to wrap this up and play a little bit of music. If you could go ahead and wrap that up, that would be great. Amazing work, contestants. Thank you so much. Woohoo! Okay, if we can have everyone leave the stage, and we'll go ahead and get this contest started. All right. So, first up is that amazing veteran chemistry teacher representing the Leadership Institute, Sarah Berger. Ah, polyethylene, my old friend. It's been a while since I've seen you. Jerry made you technically banned in the state of California in 2014, but to be fair, you do take a thousand years to break down and you haven't been very nice to the ocean, so that's kind of on you, buddy. <laughs> so, audience, this is polyethylene. He goes by plastic to his friends. And there are many types of plastic that have different kinds of properties, but to really explain what's happening in this magical substance, I think I'm gonna need some MERS. Some MERS, do we have MERS in the audience? Oh, I see some over here. Come on down, MERS. MERS, MERS. They're talkative, did you realize polymers were talkative? I didn't. Let's hear what they're saying. Mur okay, murmur, do you have a name outside of your MERNUS? Murmur, murmur. Okay, great, so wonderful. How about you? Do you have a name? Mur, mur. No, they don't have names. Let's see if we continue with um, the similar language. Mur. Okay. Mur, mur. All right, and last one. Mur. Thank you so much. Round of applause for the mur so far. Now, these murs may look like people, but they're only taking this form to make you more comfortable. Indeed, what they are is immortal shapeshifters. In ancient Greece, they were called meros, which stands for part. And when you have just a single mer, we call this a monomer. Mono stands for one, mer stands for part, so this is one part. But it turns out that the mer's true power comes when they get together. 
Murs, unite. <laughs> Can you feel it, people? They're changing. Now. Mers have different properties when they get together, and when you have many mers, <laughs> our prefix for many is poly, so we have now created a polymer, a chain of many mers, and it turns out that plastic bags are polymers. Lots of little ethylene mers have gotten together to form polyethylene, but plastic is not the only polymer. <laughs> Another example of a polymer, styrofoam. <laughs> styrofoam is polystyrene, a bunch of little styrene molecules linked together in a polymer. And it turns out that you can break this polymer up if you take a little <laughs> bit of acetone. Now, acetone is nail polish remover. Take my cup. Put it in the acetone. And let's see what happens to our MERS. Our MERS are breaking apart. And as our MERS come apart and we start to lose them into the ether, we can see in our container bubbles are being released. That's actually not the product of a chemical reaction. It's the air that's caught in the polymer that is now being released from the polymer chain. You can still see that the styrene that was originally in the cup is floating around in my acetone solution. Children, don't do this at home. <laughs> but breaking up is sad. Oh. So we can also get some MERS back together. So I have this magical solution here. It's soapy water. Ooh. So, soapy water, while impressive, clean your hands, kids, you can add a little bit of glycerin. Now, glycerin is not nitroglycerin, the explosive. <laughs> glycerin is something that you put on your hands if you wear gloves a lot, keeps them from getting dry. Hmm. So, you can put a little bit of glycerin into your soapy water, and glycerin doesn't actually cause MERS to bond, it just causes MERS to be uh, more attracted to each other. <laughs> MERS, please, this is a family environment. <laughs> so, if your MERS become more attracted, it changes the properties of our soapy water. So, turns out, what you can do... Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's science, folks. Oh. <laughs> You know, I really appreciate my MERS and my social environment. Bubbles! Okay, deep sadness here, people. Mer, maybe one of you guys could help me. Can you offer me a sleeve? What do you think, audience? Can we help Maybe her? it's the can magic MERS. Can we do this? Can we do this? Oh. Mers, Mers, you appear to be magic. Thank goodness I had my Mers up here, folks. Could not have done it without them. Thank you, Mers. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mers. And that is the subtle magic of polymers. All right, folks. Another round of applause, please, for Sarah Berger and her Mers. Ooh, are you going to go home and talk to your Mers? I think you should. There was a lot of love there. All right, next up, we have representing middle school Danny Tucci. All right, all right, how are we doing today? Awesome. You guys may have saw I was making a plastic baggie. And there's a straw and there's some duct tape on it. But this is not just any bag, this is a bag of science. 
<laughs> and why it is so cool is that I'm going to show you that air is stronger than gravity. What? What? Crazy. I know. I have a friend. He's like, no, you can't. That's not true. And I'm like, well, I'm going to show you and all the naysayers here that air is indeed stronger and more powerful than gravity. But not just any air. I'm going to put air inside my bag of science to see how exactly strong air is. So I'm going to need your help. I'm going to blow up this bag on a one, two, three. So I'm going to need some help from the audience on one, two, three. Woo. All right, we have some air in our bag. Now you'll notice it has a little bit of room. It's, it can, it's not super strong, it's a little strong. So there's, there's, some, there's some wiggle room. So we're going to do this one more time, and we're going to see what's going to happen to the air inside my bag of science. Ready? One. Two, three. All right, look at that bag of science. So much air, so much air. Now look, I'm pushing it and it's not, it's not doing anything. It's just kind of, it's just kind of sitting there, like really strong. I bet if I tried to punch it, it wouldn't really move a whole lot. So I'm curious as to what is happening to the air inside of my bag. I'm now going to call up my randomly selected volunteers. Come up, randomly selected volunteers. Randomly selected volunteers. Here they come. Whom I've yes. never met before. Don't know them. Unknown. Woo. All right. And my randomly selected volunteers are going to be air molecules. So you're going to be oxygen. You guys can just put oxygen. We have some CO2 that you guys breathe out. CO2, and then most of the air, which you may or might not know, is actually made of nitrogen. So we're going to have a lot of nitrogens. So you're a nitrogen, and you're a nitrogen, and you're a nitrogen, and last but not least. All right, thank you. Give it up for my volunteers. All right. So what you may not see from the audience is there is actually a giant square on the floor. And so that square is going to be my bag. And I'm going to ask some of the volunteers to walk around inside this bag. They're just going to be like, I'm a bag. I'm going to go, oh, ding. I hit the edge. Oh, I want to, ding. I hit the edge. Oh, I hit the edge. Ding. I'm going to keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Ding. All right. So they are going to pretend that they are the air inside my bag. So we're going to start off with just a little bit. So can I have one oxygen, one CO2, and two nitrogen inside our bag of science. <laughs> All right. Does everyone understand what you're going to do? When you hit the side, you're going to say ding. All right. And <laughs> All right. On, a, on a three. <laughs> Let's go. Three, two, one, and go. All right, awesome. Thank you, thank you. Now we're going to have everyone inside the bag of science. What do we think is going to happen? Hmm. Oh, no. All right, let's see what's going to happen. And a three, and a two, and a one, and go. All right, and thank you, everyone. Round of applause for my Woo! volunteers. Excellent. You guys did an awesome job. So what is going on is as we add more and more air inside my bag of science, the pressure is increasing. There's more air molecules inside the bag, which means it's hitting the sides of the bag with more and more energy and more and more force. So as I am blowing up my bag, it has more force that it can exert on the bag outside, and the pressure inside is increasing so that it can do some work. So now we're going to do a great um, demonstration to see how strong air is and does it defy gravity. So volunteers, will you please go around our table of science that we are going to bring Give it out. up for the table of science! <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. So what's going to happen? Each of my air molecules are going to blow into a bag just like this. There are bags sandwiched in between the two tables. 
We are not only going to lift just the table, because that would be boring, but I am going to sit on top of the table, and the combined weight will be around 160 pounds. So, do you think air is stronger than gravity? All right, let's, let's find out here. I need to get on. Let's let Danny get on. I'm going to go right in the middle to evenly distribute my weight. To my volunteers, when you blow, you're going to blow out and then put your finger on the ed end of your straw so that the air stays in the bag, and then you're going to blow again. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. Yeah. And let's count down. Three, two, one. Levitate Take. me. Is it working? Yeah. Yes. Air is stronger than gravity. Uh, all right. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Excellent job. Thank you, Danny, and thank you to our volunteers. Excellent blowers. All right. How about one more round of applause because it was so amazing. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Elements. All right, next up, people, we have another middle school teacher. And he is going to bring it. You know why? Because he's got something in store for us related to the bags that he didn't like earlier. But now I think he might like them. Here he is, Lenar Modlon Soccer! <laughs> Oh, hi, everyone. <laughs> Today, we're going to go on a safari. Where? Good question. We're going to Southeast Asia. What are we looking for in Southeast Asia? Another very good question. <laughs> we're going to be looking for the really, 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 really cool tiger. Ooh. Oh. But wait, tigers are really dangerous, so we got to make sure before we go out, we have some people who are going to be able to help us out. So can we have those people help us out? Come on up on the stage, please. More volunteers! Where are you? Come. Yes! Welcome to the jungle. Yeah. All right. I ate that bag. OK. All right, so. Uh, if I can have, uh, let's, oh, yeah, okay, so, Marie, can I have you hold this up for us, please? Oh, my gosh, we're at the jungle. Ooh. Pretty jungle. Oh, wait. There's a tiger. Oh, my gosh, there is a tiger. Now, let's talk about our tiger really quick. Oh, wait, a unicorn. Where did that come from? So weird. And look, a deer. Oh, thank you so much, deer. All right. <laughs> Can you see? You're good, OK. So let's talk about our dear friend Tiger first. Come on up over here. So our friend the tiger here happens to be a really interesting animal. Uh, there happens to be nine different species of tigers. Uh, three of them are currently extinct, and very few of them are found all over the world. We find most of them now in Southeast Asia and mostly in concentrated areas in 13 different countries. So they're very critically endangered right now, but they also happen to be really interesting. They've got obviously this bright orange color and also these black vertical stripes. Now what most people think about these black vertical stripes is that that helps them camouflage. So let's see what happens and wait and see what happens when the tiger tries to catch its food. So tiger, could you please stand up here in front of the jungle? Oh, sorry, yeah, here to the side of the jungle. Can I have my helper stand a little bit closer to the middle? Thank you very much. And my deer and my unicorn, can you please come up to the front? <laughs> of the jungle, please. Now, obviously, our unicorn is not real, but it is to, I'm sorry. <laughs> but
But today, they're going to represent what we normally see. So tiger, could you please hide behind the jungle? And unicorn, could you pretend to eat nearby? Ah, ah, ah. Can we see the tiger right now? No. Not, really. Not really. We can kind of see it a little bit bright orange kind of moving around. And if the tiger were to try to grab the unicorn, go ahead and grab the unicorn. Oh, it runs away because it can see it. Bye, unicorn, you're safe. Yay for the unicorn. Yay, unicorn. Now let's talk about our really, 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 really cute deer here. Really cute, right? Really fun, really fun thing about deer is that not only are they really cute and adorable, they also happen to have a really different way of seeing the world. They actually happen to have a very different amount of rod and cone cells. Now rod and cone cells in our eyes allow us to see different colors and different shades of brightness and darkness. Deer happen to have a different proportion of rods and cones, meaning that they're not gonna be able to see the same shade of colors as our friend the unicorn, who disappeared magically, right, <laughs> was able to do. So if our friend the tiger here, poor tiger is still hungry, all of that's left is our friend the deer here is going to be, try to get it eat. Do, you th do we think that the deer will be able to get away and be able to see the tiger? Let's find out. So if we can put ourselves through our deer's eyes, we're gonna pretend to see what the deer sees. Usually deer see a bluish grayish kind of field of view. And I want you guys to turn your attention to um, the camera. Uh, and in addition, if you can't see the camera, we also have little green filter handouts as well for you to look at. So while that's being passed around, um, let's, talk about, let's talk about what we should expect the deer to see. So rods and cone cells happen to have obviously the ability to see reds, blues, and greens, yellows, and all that stuff. Now because our deer here has different sets of rods and cone cells, they actually can only, they see, they're able to really be able to distinguish between blues and yellows. Unfortunately, they have a hard time distinguishing reddish, orangish colors. What color is our tiger? Reddish, orangish. Oh no! Poor deer, but, they don't, but the deer doesn't know that. Okay. So it looks like a few of us have the filters. So let's go ahead and Tiger, could you please come up a little closer and see? Can't see the tiger at all. Can't see the tiger at all. So let's see what happens uh, when we look through the deer's eyes. Uh oh. Looks like the tiger looks almost like the jungle. So Tiger, could you please try to grab the deer? Oh no, it died! Oh! <laughs> Thanks so much, dear. <laughs> Give it up, people! All right, amazing. Thank you, dear unicorn, tiger, and jungle. And of course, one more round of applause, please, for Lenar! People. We're down to our final contestant. Are you ready? Okay, we, he has pants on. We have no idea what he's gonna do with that garbage bag. Let's bring him up, representing the High School Institute, John Allen! We saw a nice example earlier of what happens when you add additional air, you get additional force. So I wondered, what would happen if we took some of that air away? For this, we'll, I'm gonna need a volunteer. <laughs> Come on up. All right. Volunteer, can you tell us your name? Yes. Who are you? My name is Veronica Heinz. I'm from San Mateo. And are you an animal or a mer? Mer. Mer. She's a mer too! <laughs> Thank you, Veronica. She's, Veronica's going to go ahead and sit down in this large bag. <laughs> and right now there's air on both sides of her. But what if we were to take some of that away? What would happen? So, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you better take... <laughs> oh, 
John, what, John, what is that that you're putting in there with Veronica? So we're going to use a shop vac to take some of those molecules out from inside the bag. Welcome Lori Lambertson to the stage! All right. Are we ready? What do you think is going to happen? Okay. Veronica, how are you feeling right now? Terrified. She, wait, you said terrified. happy? Oh, I'm terrified. Oh, happy and terrified. Happy and okay. All right, here we go. Oh, I don't know how to turn it off. Sorry, Veronica. Just kidding. Very nice. All right. Please, a round of applause for Veronica. Thank you. Great job. And so we saw the pressure from the outside didn't change, but the inside did, and there was an imbalance of force. Thank you. What do we think? I feel like we have seen it all today on this stage. And so it'd be helpful then to have our contestants come up so we can summarize what we saw because there was so much science being cooked up here. Let's bring them back up on stage, please. Come on, contestants. All right. Sarah, here she is. She showed us how polymers like to link and Talk. We didn't know that at all. Thank you, Sarah. Mur, mur. Danny showed us the power of compressed air, stronger than gravity. Thank you. <laughs> Lenar showed us how the science of camouflage is in the eye of the beholder. Okay, okay. And John showed us the intense air pressure in a bag. <laughs> Woohoo! I have my trusty sound meter here. Ron, can we zoom in on this? Because, audience, this is where I need your help, okay? The noise that you make when I walk by these amazing contestants will determine who is crowned Iron Science Teacher Champion. Are you ready, audience? I don't think you're ready. You're basically dead to this machine. Come on, are you ready? Okay, okay, now you're alive. I'm shining. Here we go. Sarah Berger, what do you think? Hey, Danny Tucci. Lenar Monlon Sakai! <laughs> and John Allen! <laughs> the winner of Iron Science Teacher 2018 is Danny DJ! <laughs> yes. All right, thank you everyone for an amazing episode of Iron Science Teacher. Join us next week, same time, same place, as another four amazing middle school and high school teachers come up and cook up some science. Thank you! Thank you very much. <laughs> Is letting us go free.